Hi, I'm Joan O'Keefe, Registered Dietitian and uh, Chief Nutritional Officer of CardioTabs. And I want to talk to you today a little bit about insulin resistance. And what does that mean when the physician says to you that you're insulin resistant? What does that mean exactly for your health today and what does it mean for your future health? Insulin resistance actually is the step before diabetes. Now, it is caused in my world by two different things. You can either become insulin resistant by carrying too much belly fat, or you can become insulin resistant by doing the wrong thing in your diet. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is the people that do the wrong thing in your diet. Now, I'm quite the artist, so just go with me. I'm sure that one of these days I'll be in the Art Institute somewhere. But anyway, you'll get the idea. When you do the wrong thing in your diet and you have a lot of easily digested carbohydrate, easily digested carbohydrate to me is a very small molecule. And when it gets down into the stomach, what happens is it's so small, so little, that it's really already almost digested. So the stomach doesn't have much work to do. So what happens is, is that it gets down into the stomach, it's digested very quickly, it's thrown into the bloodstream, and basically spikes that blood sugar. Now, when we spike that blood sugar, your body gets very nervous. Because if your blood sugar were to go up and stay up, what disease is that? That's diabetes. Okay, and why is diabetes dangerous actually? Diabetes is dangerous because a high blood sugar, too much sugar in the blood, it gets into the tiniest of the little arteries, the tiniest of the little tubules in the kidney, and it rots them from the inside out. So let's say that you're a diabetic and you get a blister on your foot from a new shoe. When all of those fine little arteries that I can barely even draw, when all those fine little arteries are now um, uh, are non-existent, they have been uh, they we they have been rotted out. Basically, you get a blister on the outside of the foot. The circulation is going on here. The blood never gets to the blister to heal it, and then what happens is the blister becomes infected, the foot becomes infected, becomes gangrenous, and we end up amputating the foot or below the knee. So when you do the wrong thing in your diet and you spike that blood sugar, your body wants to bring that blood sugar back down because having a high blood sugar for a long period of time is dangerous to those tiny little arteries in the brain, in the eyes, in the heart, in the kidneys, and in the lower extremities. Diabetes is a disease of circulation. So what your body wants to do is your body wants to secrete insulin, and insulin's job is to bring the blood sugar back down. Now, when you eat a lot of easily digested carbohydrate, that would be a lot of items, let's say, with uh, white flour or with sugar, then what happens is we spike the blood sugar, secrete the insulin, bring the blood sugar back down, but oh, that felt good. This feels really good. You're getting a little bit of a sugar rush, you're getting um, a little bit of a serotonin release, that's your happy hormone. And then what happens is we secrete insulin and we make this turn right here and this part is miserable. You feel a little bit low energy, you feel a little bit irritable, and you come crashing down here. But remember, this felt good. So what do we want to do again? We want to do that same thing again. So when you start your morning with um, a donut, muffins, pancakes with syrup, um, toast with jelly, um, uh, sugary cereals, Pop-Tarts, toaster strudel, anything that is highly sugary in the morning, you spike the blood sugar, it comes crashing down, and now we want to do this again. 
And here we need to secrete insulin to bring this back down again. This is cravings. I want chocolate. I want a muffin. I want um, a croissant. I want more carbohydrate. So now what happens is, is we've eaten twice as many calories as what we need in the morning. But the real problem here is this, is that every time we do the wrong thing in our diet, we have to secrete insulin to get that blood sugar back down. Now, let me tell you about Sammy. Sammy is a little mouse, okay? Now remember, I am quite the artist. So Sammy is not happy. He is not happy because, see, he is the one that is responsible for running as fast as he can to secrete that insulin so that it will bring the blood sugar back down. So you do the wrong thing in your diet, and you spike that blood sugar, and Sammy has to run on his treadmill. And he has to run, 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 secrete insulin. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, they're going to do it again. Ready? Run, 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 run. And he has to run as fast as he can to secrete as much insulin as he can to bring that blood sugar back down. Now, I have clients that will do this six or seven times a day. And every time we do this, we crave more carbohydrate. And every time we do this, Sammy, my little mouse, your little mouse, has to run on his treadmill as fast as he can to secrete the insulin. Well, after doing this for decades, Sammy gets mad. And when Sammy gets mad, what he does is he packs his suitcase and he heads for Hawaii. And when Sammy gets mad, makes his reservation, and packs his suitcase, gets on the plane, and goes to Hawaii, you are diabetic. So Sammy cannot be worn out six or seven times a day. Sammy, this little mouse, actually is the beta cells in your pancreas. And what happens is, is that when he gets worn out after decades of spiking and crashing and spiking and crashing, he can't secrete enough insulin to cover this easily digested carbohydrate many, many times a day. So he packs, and when he packs and heads for his rest, you are diabetic. So what we need to do is instead of starting our morning with all of this easily digested carbohydrate, we need to start our morning with a protein source. This is one protein molecule, and this is one easily digested carbohydrate molecule. And your body needs to get this to look like this before it can be put into the bloodstream. So instead of getting a blood sugar that looks like this and looks like this, you get a blood sugar that goes up very slowly and comes down very slowly, and then what happens is we never get this spiking and crashing. We never get this craving for more carbohydrate. We eat half as many calories as we would have if we spiked and crashed and spiked and crashed. We have lots of energy all morning long. We are thinking clearly. We are learning. We are testing if you're a child in school. And we never get that real low in the mid-morning. Now. We need to give Sammy a break. That's the first part of insulin resistance. Because when Sammy basically needs to run on that treadmill, secreting insulin at high levels six or seven times a day, he gets worn out. And when he gets worn out and gets mad, he packs his bag and heads for Hawaii. And when he does that, he uh, when he packs his bag and heads for Hawaii, then you're diabetic. Now, what Sammy needs is a rest. That will make Sammy very happy. He needs a raft in a pool somewhere with a large glass of uh, green tea, unsweetened, of course. And um, when he gets a rest, that makes him happy. And how do we give Sammy a rest? And that's by including protein, morning, noon, and night. Now, that's the first way that we become insulin resistant, is by doing the wrong thing over and over and over again in our diet. 
The second way is by becoming overweight and carrying lots of weight around the middle. When you have something to eat, especially that easily digested carbohydrate and spike that blood sugar, Sammy runs on the treadmill and secretes insulin. Okay, Insulin has a specific shape and let's say that it looks like this. And when you're normal weight, what happens is, is that the insulin receptors on each one of the cells has that very same shape. So Sammy runs on the treadmill and basically he gets the insulin to be secreted. It's secreted, it looks like this. It comes in and it fits right here into the cell. And this shape is the same as this shape. So what happens is, is the insulin unlocks the door and lets the sugar into the cell to be used as energy. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. But when you're overweight, what happens is, is that your insulin receptors change shape. They not only change shape, but we get less of them. And we're not exactly sure why that happens, but it does. So you eat something, let's say that's sugary, you spike that blood sugar, Sammy has to run on the treadmill, and insulin still looks the same, still the same shape, but when it gets here and it tries to unlock the door, it can't because the receptor is a different shape. So what happens now is the sugar starts building up and building up and building up out in the bloodstream. The brain is sensing that and it's telling Sammy, we need more insulin, more insulin, more insulin, more insulin. So poor Sammy is running faster and faster and faster on his treadmill to secrete more insulin. But in reality, you don't need more insulin. You just need your insulin to work. So what happens is, is Sammy is getting worn out not only because you eat lots of easily digested carbohydrate in a day and he has to work so many times during the day he's getting worn out, but the brain, if you're overweight also, is telling Sammy to work harder and secrete more insulin because your insulin's not working. So what we need to do is we need to get you back down to normal weight so that your receptors return in number and they return in shape. So when you're overweight, your insulin, even though Sammy is working as hard as he can, is not working. But when we return you to normal weight, then your insulin receptors look the same as your insulin, and it opens the door for the sugar to be used as energy. So in order to give Sammy a vacation, you not only need to do the right thing in your diet, but we need to get you back down to normal weight. Because Sammy is getting worn out, insulin resistance is caused by two things. It is caused by doing the wrong thing in your diet, day in, day out, year after year after year, and making Sammy overwork. And Sammy is also overworked when you're overweight because your insulin doesn't look like your insulin receptors and it's just not working right. In order to give Sammy a break, in order to make Sammy happy so that he is happy again, in order to get him on a raft with an iced tea, we have to do two things. We have to start our morning with a protein source. We have to have a protein source at noon and a protein source at night. Basically what that will do is that that will keep the blood sugar low and even. The second thing that we have to do is that we have to get you back down to your um, ideal body weight. And when we can get you to, give, uh, to get down to your ideal body weight and we can give Sammy a rest by not spiking and crashing this blood sugar many times during the day, then Sammy is happy. Sammy will quit packing his bags, quit uh, dreaming about Hawaii, and he will stay home and do his work. And that is how we address insulin resistance. Thanks so much.